What's going on, everybody? My name is Linwood. Thank y'all so much for being here, and I hope that you are so ready for the next hour that is jam-packed full of hope, positivity, optimism, gratitude, mental attitude, and a mental check, baby. So pull up a chair, grab a couple of shots, kick your shoes off, let your hair down, and relax, because this will be the best hour that you have ever received, and I'm so excited for it, baby. Woo! Let's go! Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is CeeLo Green, and you are now tuned in to Joseph Jaffe is not famous. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. He is not famous at all. Check out this new streaming show. It is perfect. And if you don't, fuck you. <laughs> This is my best kind of show notes. If you didn't touch one of them, one of them, not even one of them. I'm not sure which one is Paul Rudd and which one is Lane Green. Final card here is the, the ultimate outcome. Today is take your dog to work day. Oh, like Scooby-Doo. Without further ado, his debut. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Sammy. Is that not good? I'm just pausing so that you just are up in front of your screen. I'm so enormously flattered. Branding is not a bad blind date. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a picture of this. No, this is agape. This is love. I really enjoyed this. You did do your homework. You asked great questions. I'm flattered. Thank you. You just, you just made my day. Look at you. You are I mean, insane. How did I do that? You're how insane. did I do that? You're insane. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Joseph Jaffe is not famous, uh, but my next guest, guests, plural, they definitely are. I see a little bit of uh, Facebook love coming from my friend, Paul. Uh, Paul, good to, uh, to see your name as opposed to see you. Um, we've been through a, a tough week. Um, I'm not ready to talk about some of the things that have happened this week. Um, but, um, you know, I on with the show, as the old saying goes, on with the show. Let's start off with um, giving you some Jaffe coin. Of course, um, I love to do this every single night. Every night, I like to give away my coin to you. All you have to do is use that QR code, follow instructions, and you will be getting yourself a delicious Jaffe coin or part thereof. It is my way of recognizing and rewarding you, the community, my family, live viewers. This is, this is the streaming economy, and in the streaming economy, everyone is invited. Not only do I have my own little crypto coin, uh, but I have an NFT. Uh, an NFJ, maybe we could call it. And in my beautiful NFT, which tonight, uh, both Grace and Sean Tia will get a, uh, a golden ticket, a golden VIP. That's my way of saying thank you for being a part of the show. Uh, the one on the left, though, is, uh, is available for sale from $54 all the way up to $5,000. And I have some news some breaking news, if you will, uh, but GTM Hub, Go to Market Hub, just purchased a $2,500 NFT. Yes, there are uh, about three or four $2,500 NFTs. I never told anyone what the NFT was about. I never said why some of them were more expensive than others, um, but if you buy and hold a $2,500 NFT, you get to sponsor the show. And in fact, I supersized it. And uh, GTM Hub will sponsor an entire week of Joseph Jaffe is Not Famous for $2,500, which, which is what they paid for the NFT. What is so unbelievable about this new economy that we're living in? And, and in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna devote my entire my entire soliloquy to these incredible changes, these decentralized changes that we are living in and living through. What's so amazing about the NFT is that you can actually resell the NFT. 
If you haven't used the sponsorship, you can resell it for $5,000, $10,000, $50,000, $100,000, whatever you choose, and 90% of the proceeds go to you, 10% to me, which essentially is a royalty. So if you are trying to figure out this whole uh, brave new world, the best way to do it is just to do it, is to experiment as I am doing and as I guess GTM Hub is doing as well. So I want to thank uh, Jeremy and all the folks at GTM Hub. You're going to be hearing a lot about them, and I'm going to be making sure that they get their money's worth. But now from the sublime, uh, let's get to the ridiculous. One of the things about um, losing one's sense of taste and smell, as I have over the past week, is that uh, you get to do some stupid experiments. And I decided to do a stupid experiment uh, for you tonight. So in my hand, I think I might need uh, a little bit of fanfare. Um, so let me get that air horn ready. This is a rather large piece of onion, of red onion. And I'm going to attempt to eat this entire onion and see whether, in fact, my sense of smell and taste are back, whether I've been bluffing this whole time. So uh, I probably need some music. Uh, let's find some backing music. Uh, we'll go with... Uh, uh, All right, here we go. It's beautiful. The view I have while it tears my flesh from the bone. Oh no. The world keeps spinning round. I always cry even though it isn't allowed. So proud. Hear a scream without a sound While everyone is still around You can watch me dance by myself And then my friend is eating an onion. I'm feeling a little bit of a tingle in my nose. I'm feeling a little bit of a tingle in my throat. But otherwise... It's business as usual. It might have been a piece of cauliflower or broccoli. Uh, let's get on with the show. As I said, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Last night, we had the incredible Jackie Huber on the show. Jackie pivoted her whole life and moved from being a corporate marketer, an author, a, a public speaker, to um, being all in in the world of drag. Um, and she now manages, she has her own talent agency managing drag artists. I saw her TEDx where she did this incredible drag act. Um, just amazing what happens when you find your purpose and your passion. And speaking of purpose and passion, I'm so thrilled that Grace Holden, uh, as she likes to call herself, the speaker brand chick, or is it chick? I'm not sure, but she is chick as well. Uh, Grace Holden will be in the house and then followed by her story true. She is a creator, a poet, a spoken word artist, a writer, an advocate, and an aspiring best-selling author. And as I like to say, all of that before 10 a.m. in the morning. Now it's time to get into uh, our seated soliloquy. And as I spoke about, and as I promised, uh, it would be a continuation of this crazy, crazy world that we're living in, this world of of crypto, this world of NFTs, this world of metaverses, and finally, you know, this world of, of DAOs. The United States Constitution is inarguably one of the most important and powerful documents in existence. I purchased a pocket-sized copy of the Constitution from Amazon for around $5 in 2016 after Kaiser Khan held it in his hand in his scathing rebuke of then-candidate Trump at the Democratic National Convention. We the people for the people. Well, if that's true, then shouldn't the people own the Constitution? I mean, literally? Turns out, we might just do that. A few days ago, yes, a few days ago, a group of people came together and formed a DAO. That's a decentralized autonomous organization for you non-nerds out there in order 
to buy the constitution. Yes, you heard me right. Sotheby's is auctioning off an extremely rare official first edition printed copy of the constitution. And according to estimates, its value should be between 15 to 20 million dollars. There are 11 copies in existence and at last sold for $165,000 in 1988. The thinking behind this was that $20 million needed to be raised would be competitive. Uh, competitive enough to like have a shot to be able to win it. And a stretch of $30 million was considered to be enough to secure this precious cargo. Now, if memory serves, the crypto raise began on Monday evening with the deadline of Wednesday evening, that's right now, in order to achieve this big, hairy, audacious goal. Ambitious and a little unrealistic, perhaps. Also, if the attempt is unsuccessful, all of the ETH, the crypto money, will be returned. Now, I purchased 50,000 people, which I imagine is like a parcel of land. And tonight, I purchased 25,000 more. All in all, it cost me about 400 to $500. Progress report. As I deliver the soliloquy, $33 million dollars has been raised with a new goal of 35 million dollars which will probably hit by the end of the show we're buying the constitution and it will be governed by the people and now that you know the first part the second part is just as cool a dow is not a hierarchical corporation with a board managing directors, a C-suite, and external shareholders, which are disproportionately stacked in favor of corporations and institutional investors. Instead, imagine that every single employee of said corporation and its business partners and their employees and their customers and the community get a say in literally every single strategic and operate, operating decision that ever is going to be made. In this case, that includes a whole bunch of Americans and global citizens, newly minted immigrants, and those who trace their ancestors back to the Mayflower and beyond, and me. I've owned many things, but the Constitution might be the craziest of them all. Ain't Web 3 grand? Nick Cage would agree. So watch the space. The best is yet to come. Who knows where this will lead to and where it will end. But we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. And now we'll continue that fun with Grace Holden. And uh, a little bit about uh, the incredible Grace Holden. Grace is a multi-passionate keynote, motivational speaker, leadership expert, and personal and executive speaker coach. Currently, Grace is a serialpreneur who proudly serves as the founder and CEO of Real Champions League, a business development organization for speakers seeking to build their national and global platform, which includes a booking management and speaker concierge service. For the last decade, she has also been the host of a prominent annual conference called Voices of Victory Summit. Grace is the author of Dirty, the book, and best-selling international author of Invincible and Overcomer, two collaborations, and she's writing two other inspirational books entitled Extraordinary You, like Extraordinary You, and F-O-Y, I love this, Fly, First Love Yourself, where she spills the tea on positive self-image 101 that most people ignore. I think it's safe to say that Grace Holden is an underachiever Grace, welcome to the show. And you're you're going to have to unmute yourself because, uh, as amazing as that sounded, there we hello, go. Hello, you caught me sharing the show. So, hello, 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 everybody. Well, Let me get this right. Thing. So you can be good. That, that is a good thing that you were sharing the show. This is my hashtag. Yes. You're on mute. Uh, normally, it's I'm on mute. So you know, it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. 
<laughs> now, Grace, we we will talk about how we know each other. Uh, we will talk about a whole bunch of things. Uh, but always, I like to now start off with what special day it is. And I don't know if you know this, uh, but today is actually the Little Mermaid Day. So, you know, <laughs> happy Little no Mermaid way. Day. Can you believe it? And why, why would I even, why would I have the audacity to even show this? Because we learned some fun facts about you, Grace. And one of those fun facts, in fact, is... Who knew that you were, in fact, uh, a mermaid? I'm never get right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh but my gosh! <laughs> you can certainly take a photo of it. If you could be an animal or a mammal, you would be a mermaid. You're a total water baby. So, uh, how about that? When, when, when it's so true. When, when did you sprout the tail? <laughs> when I was born, <laughs> literally, when I was born. I have been, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. I was always adventurous and I absolutely love the water, the lake, the ocean, the river, you name it. I love it. Now the hot tub, the pool, you know, the beaches, all of the above, because you know, Seattle's beaches, but you know what I mean? It's still water. So absolutely. I am that chick who loves to be in the water. And I'm also that black girl who doesn't matter what kind of hairstyle I have. It could be you know, whatever. And I'm going to jump in a pool or a hot tub or a steam room or, you know, anything Why wet. <laughs> Why not? And Seattle has a lot of water anyway in the form of rain. So, so there you go. And that too. But you know, there's really not that much water in the rain, you know, because it just drizzles. <laughs> it's a concept. It reminds so. me a lot of Cape Town in that regard. Now, now Grace, I have to say, I'm so thrilled because you are, you know, you are, <laughs> Guest number 300. I actually cannot believe that I've interviewed 300 people. It's amazing. I mean, it's crazy. Congratulations. Like, well, you know what? It's. It, I, I think it says something for endurance, for determination, for staying the course, you know, and, uh, and for that marathon. You imagine, you know, at the beginning of the journey thinking – uh, and trying to fast forward to 300 and think about how I would, you know, have the resilience and the, you know, and the ability to keep going through health issues, et cetera. Um, I'm sure that there's a parallel path in terms of not just storytelling, but in terms of people being able to, able to overcome um, their own challenges and adversity. And you've been in the middle of all of that. Yes, absolutely. There is, you know, when you think about 300 for you, that's definitely some overcoming, right? And I've had to do some of that as well, not just some, quite a bit of it. I mean, I remember when I was a little girl and I really thought I just lived this ordinary life, right? With ordinary family and, and an ordinary situation. And I knew growing up that I did not want to be just that ordinary little girl. I was very curious and I always wondered the land of Seattle, I guess you could say the water and the land. So through that, there were some things, pivotal things that happened in my life that I had to overcome. I mean, some things that were big and some things that were small. Uh, I think that now an adult over 50, wow. Um, as an adult, that I don't even have pictures from when I was a little girl because we lost everything. So I think my earliest picture is maybe six or seven, maybe it's an eight year old picture, something like that. Um, so overcoming, right? So it, even in that, I've had to overcome just homelessness and, and abuse and just so many things. And as you come out, you know, through that, the other side, you really realize the power of, you know, believing in yourself and faith, right? You really realize the power of both of those combined together. So I will have to say that I can relate to that overcoming in major ways, which is why my story and what I have to share is so important. And, and this quote just resonates with me. If you ever heard me speak ever before, you know that I say life is 10% of what happens to you, just 10%. The other 90% is how you respond, as Charles Swindoll said. And so when I've gone through the things where I've, you know, 
had everything that I thought was spectacular, houses and cars and money, and then lost everything. So yeah, Joseph, I can relate. And and you know, the, 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 the thing is that I was actually even referring, I mean, I was not only, but I was also referring to the people that you've inspired and you've touched and you've helped them hone their stories and and figure out the balance between between being able to be compelling and differentiated but also not trauma dumping and and uh and i didn't know about some of these things and it, you know it it made me wonder grace which is do you need to have go- this can apply on multiple levels do you need to have gone through your own trauma and adversity to have that empathy and that ability to help people who themselves have gone through same similar and maybe even worse experiences in their past absolutely not absolutely not as a matter of fact no it's you sharing your story is really about that deeper why right in my speaking program i talk about the why ladder why it is that you have that moment or that story. They can be moment and pivotal opportunities that happened in your life or things you remember throughout your life. They could be the most memorable event that happened in your life. You can create a story from it. And that does not have to be something traumatic. It could be a wedding. It could be a birthday. It could be a trip that you took somewhere. Whatever it is, when you share that story, because I firmly believe that you have something to say. I firmly believe that in cultivating your message because you must spread it across the globe. Guess what? You have to find a way to share that story. And so we have the Y ladder and we also have what's called the domino effect. When you start sharing that story, then that next person captures it. And you want that story to build, right? So build within your story and build to the audience that you're sharing it with. So you're right, Joseph, no. To answer the question, you do not have to have something traumatic um, where you need a trauma dump or anything like that. It could just be that period in your life going off to college. It could be multiple things. And and it, you know, it's, it's, it's true. And it's interesting, you know, even when I think about, um, you know, when I, when I look at, at a show like Survivor or, um, you know, or uh, America's Got Talent or The Voice, it almost seems like everyone has to come with, with you know, even quite frankly, when you look at The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, everybody's got to come with a story and, and every story seems worse or more harrowing or more insane than the next. But on, on the flip side, uh, everyone, and, and this is the quote that I found for you, Um, Inside each of us is a natural born storyteller waiting to be released. And so to your point, this is from Robin Moore, that it's less about, it's less about the story and it's more about the ability to authentically, compellingly, persuasively, emotionally deliver that story. Yeah. And really, really, it's less it's less about you. And it's more about them, about your audience. And what is the outcome you want to walk away with? And how are you weaving that story in such a way that it's memorable and it's applicable and it's relevant to the audience you're sharing it to? Yeah, I think that's so that's that's fantastic. And I will tell you that I am. Uh, as guilty as the next, maybe even more guilty, I'm not sure that I ever went into a keynote, you know, back before the world went insane and answered that question. And I'll, and I'll be honest, you know, and actually said, what do I want my audience to take away? What is the outcome? What's, you know, that, that truly, truly, I think I'm a servant keynoter, but I don't know that I actually answered that question and I certainly, uh, if and when I ever speak in front of a group again, will make sure that I bring that to the table. 
Absolutely. Those are some of the things that I believe quite a few voices and those who have something to share, um, they could cultivate that a lot better or they just don't know or they're not quite certain. So you thought you've got up there and said something incredible. Your audience is looking like, well, what's in it for me? Because that's really all that they're dialed into. W-I-I-F-M, the with them. What's in it for them? The W-I-I-I-F-M, exactly. What's in it for me? And there's also the uh, mm -hmm. W-S- I see, right? Why should I care? Um, and uh, why should I care? Why exactly. should I care? Why, why should I care? Or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, I'm I'm not so good with numbers and and, and acronyms and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Grace, mm -hmm. uh, I would love for you to tell people about how we met, and and about this incredible, um, you know, project that you put together. I mean, it, it felt like. Um, I don't even know what the word is because it because it still lives. It, it was organic. It was like birthing a child. Um, tell us about this this incredible initiative. It was the only time that I was on Clubhouse during a period of three or four months where where I was going from hospital to hospital to hospital, and I was like, the only time I am actually going to bother, not bother, but this is what I wanted to give of myself for you for all these incredible right. people. So tell us about this initiative. Well, first of all, I thank you immensely for that. I truly do. And I, did you ever get, did you check your email and get that gift? But thank you immensely for that. That's one. And two, it was the five minute power talk, y'all. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. We were on Clubhouse for multiple weeks leading up to a five day, five minute power talk um, competition where we gave away, I gave $5,000 cash. So there is some relevance to the numbers of five. You know, my name is Grace and there's five letters in my name and five is the number of Grace. And five minutes is that a level of speaking like no other when you can complete your message and your talk and what's in it for them in five minutes. And Joseph Jaffe was a judge. Uh, and when, he, when I say he was a judge, he was a really good judge, a really good judge. And we had hundreds upon hundreds of hundreds of people come through Clubhouse um, for the competition, but thousands and thousands of people came through the room. And all of that led to the Voices of Victory Summit that you see right there on the screen. Um, for everyone to be able to tell their story, grow their business, build their influence. Um, and so these are the talks, you know, I am ready to speak. Yes, I'm ready to speak. So we, um, Elle Michelle, she won $5,000 cash from our business, Real Champions League Speakers Agency, because we were on our own talent hunt. And out of that, we met some amazing, incredible speakers who became speakers on our platform some of which have created um, videos from zero to video in 30 days because we believe everybody needs a digital footprint. Yes, you do. So yeah, it was an incredible experience. Boy, did we work. We had 20-something uh, judges and coaches, um, several hours of coaching. My lead um, co-mod, Christina and Robert, worked tirelessly tirelessly um, judging as well or uh, prepping people for their five minute power talk. It was awesome. Well, Christina is actually on the show uh, tomorrow. Uh, and yes. uh, so back to back, uh, Grace and uh, I am, I am graced with both you and Christina. I'm excited uh, and tell her she needs to fill out that Google doc. Uh, but uh, hey. uh, you know what? It's now my turn to be, uh, to, to, to turn on the uh, to to turn on the taskmaster role, um, but it was, wonderful. it was wonderful, Grace. And and you know one of the things that that I just really uh, loved about it was uh, someone on LinkedIn, by the way, said yes. We sometimes don't know who it is, but they will reveal themselves. Who are you, LinkedIn user? And Glenn is here, and he said sorry for being late to the show. I'm glad that Glenn is here as well. Uh, Glenn always likes to get his Jaffe coin. So there is the QR code for Glenn. You see, this is like a- <laughs> While it's live, while it's live. Hey, I have a Jaffe or... coin. Well, you might now, get Glenn, some I have, I have a Jaffe coin somewhere, right? You gave me one. I have a Jaffe coin. 
I know, and you're going to get an NFT, and if you put your phone against that uh, QR code, uh, you will uh, you'll get yourself some more coin. Um, you know, Grace, what was what so was so um, what was so amazing about the these five minute power talks, and even taking El Michelle as an example, is people grew through that process. People gained confidence. People gained stature. Every time they went, they went through it again and again and again, iteration, 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 especially the ones that were open to judges' feedback and, and actually took what was being said to heart as opposed to took it personally. They grew and they've become power. Some of them have become power, power brands and power speakers. And it's all because of this initiative. So true. It is very true. This initiative was a, really a whole, um, you know, mission statement has everything to do with protecting, cultivating and representing those who have a powerful message to share with the world. And some of that is us going to find them. And, you know, we had some of the best of the best. of the best. I mean, the first runner up, OMG, and the second runner up, both of them, one of them, an NSA Toastmaster specialist, Linda Marie, then we had Coco Lorraine, and we had uh, Dr. Who. I mean, we had so many run-ups that it was so difficult. I mean, it was like a point away from the winner. Um, and then we had Clubhouse folks who were able to um, vote as well. So it was great. It all commenced at our huge 40-speaker um, few thousand people voices of victory summit so it was awesome it was just amazing and By we're going to win again and i will be back if i'm invited and guess what we we unmasked our linkedin user it's christina and she said she knows she owes me the google doc and she promises she'll get it to me uh so christina <laughs> i can't wait for you to be on the show tomorrow um we are going to get into your um <laughs> my goodness you've written many books but we're going to get into a new book but before we do, we're going to take a brief break. Uh, and Fanzo, good old uh, iSocial fans, is going to present uh, his vignette on Wellness Wednesdays. I have a sneaky feeling that he might be saying hello to Jackie Huber, who was last night's guest in this one. But we'll see. Let's watch that. And then we'll get back to the book. I love it. What's up, friends? Brian Fanzo here, iSocial fans. And you know, Today, you know, one of the things that I was really thinking about this idea of, you know, community and really the impact community has in business and in conversations and really as we move forward. And a lot of that also has to do with the way that we approach mental health and the way that we have conversations about our vulnerabilities. And as most know, I am ADHD uh, super powered. I was diagnosed about nine years ago, uh, ADHD. And for me, you know, I'm very open about that, that publicly. I, I talk a lot about that on stages as a speaker. But I think the other part about this is the more that I talk about it, it's really not about getting others to talk about ADHD. It's really about giving others permission to share their vulnerabilities and what things they're going through. And I think that sharing can also be another layer of scary and, and really open us up in, um, in ways that also can really be something that you know, we're not prepared for or comfortable with. And so I think this is where community comes so vital, right? Like surrounding yourself with people that, that understand who you are, that, that, under, that, that make you better, that are willing to celebrate your wins, but also you know, cheer you on um, as you're going. And I will say the part of this that I just wanted to stress and share here for this bit is um, I believe it's up to us to celebrate our wins along the way. Too many of us don't talk about our successes because we're afraid our friends are going to be jealous or upset of the good things that we have going. And the question I think we have to ask ourselves, should those be people be called our friends if they're not happy for us being happy, if they're not willing to cheer for us when things are going well because we're going to cheer for them? And so I believe part of this comes down to you know, knowing what you don't know, surrounding yourself with people that know what you don't, and then recognizing the importance of sharing our wins and being our own biggest cheerleader because if we're not being our own biggest cheerleader, why would someone else cheer for us on this long journey up and down? So with that, uh, my name is Brian Fanzo, uh, founder of iSocial Fans, and now the host of a podcast, NFT365, a daily podcast, uh, which is really a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, so check that out, and um, I'll see you next time. Cheers, my friends.
so super amazing. <laughs> I listen to his his daily podcast every day now when I walk my dog. It's perfect. It's a, about a 20 minute loop and uh and I have Fanzo with me every every day. Uh Grace, any thoughts about what Fanzo just said? Hey, I love Fanzo. That is like my 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 friend. I just love him, and we've had some good conversations. And guess what? We cannot hold you know transparency and authentic, um, being authentic. Authenticity is so important, and the fact that he speaks about it every day, and that mental health is so you know prevalent. And I know we've just gone through a massive amount and still going through from the pandemic. Yeah, what Fanzo had to share, um, I could listen to him every day as well. And I do, for the most part, <laughs> always chiming into something he has going on. But I just think, um, you know, in today's day and age that we should speak up and speak out about the things that are going on around us that are um, important to us. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And you know his his message about being your own and being your best cheerleader mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. is almost a, like a corollary of this idea of of love yourself and you know and 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 smile at yourself in the mirror and realize that that we mm -hmm. are uh, each other's and our own best friends um and especially when you know if you're not going to love yourself how on earth do you expect anyone else to love you uh, in return well this is my sign for loving yourself, right? You know, loving yourself. First love you fly, which is part of the book that I have, um, you know, working on and finishing up. But yeah, that's if you, you know, and that's part of being true to you and being authentic as well and loving right, you so and liking you sometimes. So you spoke about books and boy, oh boy, are you, uh, are you writing books? You've written, you've written dirty. Uh, you have, you have contributed on Invincible and Overcomer. Uh, and now we get to, this is always my favorite part of the show when I get to turn everything into, into, uh, your book and celebrate the background becomes your book. Uh, we even, we even, we even make the logo. If you look at up top and the top, right, there you go. Your logo, it is called yes. the speaking business from a to Z, uh, build, uh, so tell it, build the speaking career of your dreams one stage at a time. Tell us about the book. Absolutely. So this is an opportunity. Here's what I'm really super excited about, that I am definitely excited about the fact that this will be a New York Times bestseller, which is super, you know, there's already very few people writing books. I and mean, there's very few people that look like me that are writing this type of business book. So this is the type of book that anybody, it doesn't matter what level of speaking you are at, doesn't matter if you're brand new, if you're thinking about it, if you've been speaking for a while, everybody, there would be 26 rich chapters of everything you need to know about the speaking business from A to Z. So here's how I'm going to test that. Joseph, ask me anything about the speaking business and I'll let you know if it's going to be in the book. All right. So what I, what I would like uh, to know is about discounting your speaker fee when somebody says you're too expensive uh, what do you do? How do you how do you successfully negotiate? And a part two, what happens when people fall into what I call the black hole of marketing? In other words, you name a price and then it's like they they disappear. They the the ground opens <laughs> up and swallows them whole, and you never you never hear from them again. What do you do in that situation? Okay, well, the first thing is N is negotiation. So you just nailed one of the letters in the book. So we don't just talk about negotiations on the surface. We go deep into negotiation. We have a conversation about your fees. And we also have a conversation about your free, some people call them, or complimentary events showcasing your, your talent, really. So we don't negotiate against our own fees. We are very clear on them. And many times people will ask someone else what their budget is. And in the speaking industry, that's kind of like a woo, woo, woo. I'm going to ask them their budget so I could fall within their budget. And then there's those who are professional speakers who are not going to ask you your budget. And you're going to set your, your fee is set. And that is what you're going to say. Uh, however, there is a time 
where you can negotiate. So if they only can give you 10K and your fees 15K, then what else can they do for the other 5,000? Maybe they can buy enough to get, you know, to, to get you up to the other 15, to the 15 by buying enough books that you're going to have, right? Or a service that you're going to have. And this is outside of your, of course, your travel and all of that. This is the art of negotiating. We never undercut our fees, especially if we don't as an agency undercut our um, clients, our speakers fees. So it's real important to understand that you set the tone. You are the, you know, you're not just the person that has a temperature check. You are literally the thermostat to your own fees. So it's really important you stick to it. But there are going to be some sometimes where you're going to negotiate um, a way for them to make up that fee, even including referrals. That's one. Now, the dark hole of marketing. Of course, that's under our marketing. <laughs> so, yes, that's another piece that we speak about in the speaking business from A to Z. It's not an unsolved mystery. We have everything you need to know, we believe, in that book that will help you get through, equip you, I should say, because we don't use the H word, the help word, equip you and provide you with the resources that you really need. So you don't want to get, you know, they do disappear. Hey, you know, what's for you is for you. Marketing is one of those sorts of things that is consistent and you don't want to market yourself um, and not be very clear on who you are, who you serve and why it is that you are delivering that message. So marketing is a whole nother subject. And guess who you're going to get to talk to tomorrow about that? Christina. Yay, Christina. Now, so, mm -hmm. so I want to, I want to recap a few things and then actually come up with a, a, something that I heard, which I just think is just brilliant, brilliant. So I'd love to share it, you know, pay it forward. So number one, and, and I know that you will have said this, always keep your rate consistent, right? Don't quote net versus gross, etc. The rate is the rate is the rate. Number two, never discount, add value, figure out ways to kind of get to that speaking fee. Uh, just so important. Mm -hmm. Here's what I heard, which I just absolutely loved, which is there are going to be times when you're going to speak for free and, and rather speak for free than discount or, or cut your fee. And sometimes it's a strategic opportunity as well. This is the, the tip that I heard, which is if your speaking fee, let's just say is $10,000, send them an invoice for $10,000. Ah! Right. And then it That's says, less, right. Less goodwill amount or, you know, less, whatever you call it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and so their, their net price is zero, but they can, they get the invoice and they can see the value that you are providing for them in good faith and maybe with respect to investing in the relationship. Right, because we don't demand a fee, we command a fee. And we command a fee by setting the precedence of what our, our rates are, what our fees are. So that has been a hot tip I have been saying for so long, and I'm sure it's been repeated multiple times now on Clubhouse, but trust me when I say, I'm sure one of the very first to say that you never have Free. That's the F word we do not use. It's complimentary. We do waive it for them for this. We let them know in advance and that sets the precedence and keeps your rates intact. So they know when they have you come back what it is that you charge. I love that complimentary as opposed to as opposed to free. Uh, and all of this is in the book. From A to Z. All of this, all of this is in the book. I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you one more question about it, but before I just want to say that I really loved this point about you are the thermostat, not the temperature check. Uh, I think that comes down to this idea of you've got to be in control of you. You know, somebody's mm -hmm. got to control that thermostat. May as well be you. Right. May as well be you. It May should well. be. It should be you. Mm hmm. And that's and we we represent that as an agency. We represent that. That right there, making sure that it is our speakers that are, you know, even if they're not represented by us and we're training them and we're getting them prepped and ready to get out in the speaking world, that they are very clear that they are in charge of what they want in life. All right. So my, my final question for you is, is, is if this is the A to Z of speaking, uh, what is filed under the letter Q? Um, Q, oh, do, 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 wait, I know. Hold on. 
I have something for Q. We have our FAQs. Nope, there's something that we just went through all of this. Christine is going to get me for not remembering. We literally just finished all of the alphabets because this is our pre. And so, uh, oh, it's coming. It's going to come to me in a minute. Well, but I want to say we have X marks the spot. Okay. Mm -hmm, like for that. X. <laughs> we well, have I, X well, marks the spot. And well, I tell um, you what, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to cheat. I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to cheat uh, while you're sitting in the green room and while we welcome. Uh, our creator, her story true in a moment. But this has been the incredible Grace Holden. She uh, earns the title speaker, brand, chick and chick. Uh, if you want to get hold of her, there are a whole bunch of ways uh, you can do that. Uh, but first of all, please go and pre-order the speaking business from A to Z. I've actually posted the URL in the comments on all the channels. Um, so that's how you can find out. But if you actually want to find out more about it, uh, just go to I am ready to speak. I am ready to speak uh, is going to tell you everything that you need to know about how to kind of get on stages um, and 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 move on and and develop your confidence, your story, your narrative, your differentiation. Grace Holden will hold in your hands uh, as you move through what sometimes can be uh, very, very scary. You can find her, and she's often in the club uh, and uh, also on Instagram. And then finally, uh, on Metabook, as I call it, or Face Meta, uh, just uh, search for Champion Speaker Lab. Grace, thank you for gracing us. Uh, and uh, I will uh, hang out in the green room, and when we're done, uh, come back and, and, and we'll wrap it up. All right. Thank you. All right, that was Grace Holden, and now it is time uh, to welcome uh, our creator, uh, the incredible Her Story uh, True. Now, a little bit of background on uh, Her Story True. Uh, her name is, uh, is uh, Shawnita Wall. Uh, she is a poet, a spoken word artist, a writer, an advocate, and an aspiring best-selling author. Those are the best kind. She made her debut as a published author in 2021. Her story, True, utilizes her poetry to share the voice of women around the world who have battled and overcame the difficult times and survived and, dare I say, thrived as well. Let's say hello to her. Welcome to the show. Hello. Well, I am going to, uh, the crowd is going wild as they, as they <laughs> should for you. Um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I am going to give you our special creator uh, um beautiful border uh i'm gonna oh give God, you a chance so to, <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> give you a chance to introduce your, yourself um and then i know that you are going to be performing uh me first and white dress i'm gonna disappear i'm gonna let you do your thing and then myself and grace will be back to wrap it up okay all right well Thank you for having me. My name is Her Story True, or Tia Shantia. Um, I'm going to be sharing my pieces. Um, first of all, I'm a spoken word artist. I'm a writer. I advocate for women empowerment um, and encourage people to share their story. Um, so my first piece is called Me First. I'm sorry. I could not return a favor. I was too arrogant to tell anyone how clueless I truly was. Not sure I ever experienced that before. So I had to learn to love myself. How could I love you? You deserve more than decorated words. I need to learn to love me first. I need to love me first, but not just for you. Call me selfish if you must. I truly understand. How naive would I claim to be I love you when I don't know if I love me? Um, and that is a piece that I wrote, and it can be found in my book, Me First. Um, and the next piece is called The White Dress. Dun, 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 dun. The day has come. I need to clean my soul, my body, my heart, 
my mind. Am I ready? I'm not ready. Is anybody ever able to check all the boxes? Prepared for the scrutiny? The expectations to be? The ideology that says that I must be? The commitment to flawlessness? Skipping stones, walking on eggshells to fulfill the requirements? Holy, sanctified, pure, and undefiled for this damn white dress. Without the blame, wash my face in the shame of my iniquities. My heart is so broken, no longer retaining capacity to hold embarrassment and guilt. My mind polluted and tormented by the consistent participation and I declare war on me. I know that I have no right to even consider I am worthy enough, clean enough, I have no more space to hide this thing that they have given to me. Will they be able to see it? I know I must find a way to fit into this white dress. Last night I tried and I tried to wipe it all away. I scrubbed and I scrubbed. How do I free myself from this thing that they have given to me? Will they be able to see it? I know I must find a way to fit into this white dress. What about me is socially acceptable? What about me is socially lovable? I'm socially a mutt, a mongrel. Who is going to want something so used? Disgraceful. How do I wear this white dress when society has labeled me trash? I have no dowry to bear from my bridegroom to bribe the hearts of those around me, to see beyond my failure to achieve the unachievable perfection. Is it attainable for me, for any of us? My past, my family tree, look at me. I know you see it. They said, I need to put on this white dress. But what about all the dirt and filth I've caught my life? How do I hide it all? Will I, will anyone ever be perfect enough to wear this white dress? Thank you guys for listening. That was white dress. <laughs> you know, I, um, I'll get to, you know, I'll get to your book in a moment. Um, but especially white dress it was it was very heartfelt and and very emotional you know and and it was interesting for me because on on one hand um what what you know the theme that we discussed today about loving yourself you know from what what fans were said what grace was saying so much you know just just you know just served up what you were talking about um and the fact that all I could think of is that no one should ever feel that way. No one should ever have to feel that way. No one ever should be made to feel that way. Um, because certainly, literally and figuratively, when you are in that white dress, you are the most beautiful person in the world um, and, and you're the only person in the world. Those were some of my thoughts, but I felt a sadness. Yes. Yes. So um, white dress, I originally started writing it. I was in my late teens, early 20s. Um, and, you know, my family is such a mixture of ethnicities. Um, my dad is biracial. Um, and the issue that I had then is um, not feeling accepted um, because I was one of his darker children. Um, so I, I kind of struggle with that. And then not only that, learning that the relationship between him and my mother, um, I was the product of an affair. So um, trying to be accepted and trying to fit in and what better way to put it than, you know, the white dress, you know, generally when 
two people get married, the bride is expected to dress in all white to symbolize, you know, her as being this perfect, undefiled, desired being. And at that moment in my life, I didn't feel feel like that. Um, but um, as I got older, I felt it was time to finish it because I felt like I had to find a way, one, to bring it to a close, um, not just for me, but for anybody that, you know, will ever read that or will ever hear that piece to let them understand, you know what, you are not alone. You know, there is somebody has been in that position, you know, society has this thing of acceptance. You know, you have to fit into this category or that category. You have to find where you fit in, um, which is one of the biggest struggles, I think, for people today is finding where they fit. And normally when, you know, um, they can't find that fit in that place that they belong or, you know, they can't find where they're accepted. It's so interesting with with your beautiful spoken word and your poetry is that it's almost like a conversation starter um, and you have this um, amazing deep and calming um, you know effect and 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 almost you know um, co conversational approachable uh, ability to continue that conversation beyond the word and beyond the poem um, but also I, I pick up a few things I'll make you go full screen so I'll go into what I call the voice of God mode. Uh, first of all, first of all, things that I observe. One is um, I absolutely love your shirt, and I see that it says, uh, em, your, "It says, yeah, uh, your, your, story your story empowers." empowers. But the way yes. that it's written is that you can look down mm -hmm. on, and you can see that 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 message is for you. Mm -hmm. The message is for you, and I love that. And then yeah. I also saw there's something written on the wall. Can you tell us what that what that says? Um, so that says, um, eventually all the pieces fall into place. Until then, laugh at the confusion, live in the moment, and know everything happens for a reason. And, and is that a quote from a from a famous person? Is it? Is it? Um, it is actually a quote um, that I found. Um, me and my husband got married, found our first place together. And um, I was looking for stuff just to decorate the living room and I found the quote and it just, I mean, it just spoke to so much, you know, sometimes things don't always happen the way that we expect them. It doesn't mean that they're not going to happen. You know, um, time has its way of working out. We want things to happen, but time has its own plan, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and we may not understand why at the time, and and sometimes we may not even figure out what that reason is in this lifetime, but we will. Um, yeah. So uh, I would love for you to tell us about you know. So th this is so awesome because you know I get to break news uh, on the show, and I get to say, hey everybody, hot new release. Purchase yes. your copy of Me First, right? So um, tell us about this book. So um, I have been writing since I was 11 years old. Um, originally, um, me writing started out with, you know, a thing that me and my grandmother did when I was a kid. We used to go to the library. Um, she would introduce me to all these different entertainers and artists. And, you know, the one thing that kind of spoke to me was poetry. Um, I fell in love with it because you could say one thing a million different ways with poetry um, to get your message across. Um, and where poetry kind of started meaning something for me when um, I was sexually um, I was sexually assaulted um, by a family member. Um, and tried to reach out and talk to adults in my life and nobody really did what they were supposed to do um, or what I expected. As kids, we expect the adults in our lives to protect us. And I didn't feel like that happened. But um, what I found in my poetry was my, that was my friend, my comforter. You know, um, I could write anything, you know, my pad and my pen would always listen to me. Um, and so I started writing. 
um, about maybe six or seven years seven years ago, um, I wrote a piece called Dear Black Girls, and I shared it with my son. And he told me, he said, Mom, you have to publish this. You know, somebody needs to hear this. Um, it took me a couple of years, but I finally, when COVID hit, it was like, this is the time, you know, um, take it and run. And so I published my first book, with is, which is um, illustrated by my daughter, Jan May, who did my cover. Um, and I, I published my book, you know, and the whole purpose of me publishing was, you know, that one thing, you know, is to let people know that you are not alone. You know, it's okay to be okay. You know, society says that, you know, sometimes, you know, they want things to be pretty and be this picture perfect view, um, but it's not like that always. And sometimes, you know, you, you're not okay. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to be in that place, especially when you have dealt with difficult times. It's so be so beautiful, and uh, I have pasted um, I have pasted a link to Amazon in the comments section of the various platforms. Um, I've really just loved uh, getting to know you, getting to meet you, hearing your poetry, uh, now uh, seeing the family connection, and that you have <laughs> uh, uh, such a talented daughter. Um, so I just want to thank you for coming in. Um, the book is called Me First, Me First, and if you want to. Um, just follow her story on her story. Uh, you can you can follow her on Instagram. Um, you can uh, you can hang out with her in the club. Um, you can join her poetry group uh, on Facebook. Of course, you can send her a tip via uh, Cash App. And most importantly, go buy the book. Uh, purchase your copy of Me First uh, and do it now. Uh, I just want to thank you for coming in. Uh, thank and, you, you know, for having me. You are so welcome. And before we end, we always like to see what Chuck Norris has to say about our guests. You are Chuck Norris approved. There you go. And I will be back tomorrow with Christina Sanderson. Go and fill out your Google Doc. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the show about hope, positivity, optimism, and if there's time left over, a little bit of marketing with your host, multiple author and global keynote speaker, Joseph Jaffe. If you like the show, tell a friend or two. Please subscribe to the show. And if you want to get inside news, previews of upcoming guests and much more, visit josephjaffe.com slash subscribe to sign up for the show's newsletter. And despite the best ministrations of your wife, you still look ugly. <laughs> <laughs>